Hello and welcome to this week's Friday Forum Live with me, Sarah Glazer. As regular viewers will know, we broadcast every Friday from Point Blank Studio here in East London to bring you exclusive tutorials, artist interviews and the very latest industry insight. Now I just know that today's session is going to be especially brilliant because joining me to deconstruct a classic track by Roots Maneuver will be Point Blank's very own Ski Oakenfall. Hello again. Joining me today is artist, producer and much-loved Point Blank instructor Ski Oakenfall, who will be reaching all the way back to 2001 to deconstruct the Roots Maneuver track Witness One Hope. In between seriously rocking a flat cap, Ski has worked with artists such as Jerry Negro, Incognito and The Bays, and released on labels including Sony and Ministry of Sound. Remember, you can find out more about our courses in London, Los Angeles and online by visiting our website, pointblanklondon.com. And as always, we're broadcasting to you 100% live, so write any questions you have in the comments and we will answer them towards the end of the show. So, Ski, how's it going? <laughs> I'm fine, thanks. Oh, what an intro. Aww. Wow, <laughs> a bit about being loved and flat cap and everything. That's amazing. It's true. Although I haven't got the flat cap today. I know, I feel a little bit cheated. I forgot but, about that. Yeah. We were going we to sort of share it, weren't we? <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully you've got some uh, very interesting deconstruction for us instead. Yes, well, it's a classic track. Um, I actually talked about uh, an element of this track uh -huh. uh, in the Jess Glynn, last Jess Glynn ah, deconstruction right, yeah. uh, because there was a similar kind of arpeggio thing mm. and I said, oh yeah, you know, maybe, maybe I'll get to do uh, Roots Maneuver witness deconstruction yeah, yeah. and I thought, well, you know, here's the opportunity to do it. Awesome. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just a classic track and the fact it's like a British hip hop tune, 2001, yeah. kind yeah. of ahead of its time. I mean, it's just, yeah, fantastic. And as far as I'm aware, I think that Roots did everything on it. He did all the programming and yeah, that uh, was my understanding. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. So just yeah, amazing. A lot of respect. And um, also, one of the things that inspired this is um, this app called Ninja Jam. Right. Yeah. Matt Black's been here you know, into Point Blank, and he's actually done a, a Friday forum all about it. Uh, I'll just bring it up on the screen here. Sure. Um, there we go. This is a, it's a fantastic app and um, actually I mean there's, you can download loads of tracks that have come out on Ninja Jam and you can basically remix them, it comes with sort of extra samples, you can rearrange it, um, it's brilliant. And they've actually been running a, re a remix competition for this very track. Ah, okay. Um, so, so yeah, and you know, we've, this is a one-off, we've had special permission uh, from Ninja Jam to do oh, this. Very kind um, of them. So, you know, big shout out to them. Um, but uh, yeah, so it, what I'm going to do is I'm uh, in Ableton Live. Let's yeah. just get it back here. Uh, I'm going to program the beat. Okay. Uh, then we're going to look at the bass sound, mm -hmm. that lovely kind of squelchy bass sound, uh, yeah. and just program it from scratch in Ableton um, and using everything, all native devices. Right, yeah. uh, then we're going to look at this arpeggio sample. Yes. And we're going to look at, because uh, it is a sample, I'm not sure where Roots got it from, okay. but it is a sample that I can, that I can hear. So we're going to recreate it and then actually treat it as a sample. Brilliant. Um, there's a laser blast sound. <laughs> and then uh, I believe you've done some vocals as well. Mm, yes, I might have done. <laughs> yeah. We might be sneaking those in as yeah, well. Yeah, <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to check out some vocals as well. So. Um, I think, you know, without further ado, we should get stuck into it. Yeah, let's get going. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to put the beat in here. Yeah, I've got uh, kick, snare and hat. Pretty simple. Um, we're at 92 BPM. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, yeah, I've got the metronome on. Yeah, we've got, I've got quantize on at the moment. Um, so let's just, let's just put it in and then we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Sure. There we go, let's go for the hat and take the metronome off now. So you can hear that it's very kind of straight sounding. Yeah. It's like auto quantized it. It really needs some swing. Yes. So uh, I'm going to go in here and on push and I'm going to really whack up the swing and put it to about 75%. So right. hit quantize and just listen to the difference. Instant. 
instant coolness. Instant. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's all about the swing. Yeah. So uh, so there we go. That's the first element. So okay. now let's look at uh, the bass sound. So um, I'm going to create a new MIDI track here. I'm going to go to instruments and I'm going to bring up an analog. There we go. So um, this sound is from what I can hear, I mean, purely sort of programming this by ear, listening yeah. to the original sound, but it sounds like uh, it's using uh, two, os two oscillators right. tuned, I think, two octaves apart. Mm -hmm. um, could be three, I'm not sure. And the thing that creates the sort of squelchiness is the envelope filter. Right. So that's a big part of it. So um, I think, you know, analog is perfect for this. It's got two oscillators, loads of control over the, over the um, <coughs> frequency. So. I'm just going to turn off, in fact, I'm going to zoom in a bit here. Let's just see. There we go. So we can sort of see what we're doing. There we go. You can all see that. So I'm going to turn off the first oscillator for the moment. Um, and let's just start off just by turning down this first oscillator a little bit, just to kind of make sure we've got some headroom. There we go. Um, we've got a saw wave. I'm going to turn this octave up to two, um, but then also bring in this sub oscillator here. Which actually, it, it actually brings it down an octave, mm. but it does kind of fatten, fatten the waveform, yeah. so fatten, fatten the sound. So, um, so then we're going to go over to the filter section here, and I'm going to bring this frequency um, right down to 43. There we go. And then we're going to bring the resonance up. This is crucial, the resonance, because you can hear already it's got a bit of that kind of squelchiness to yeah, it. Yeah. Um, then we're going to look at the actual envelope. And uh, we've got uh, a tack here of um, about 80 milliseconds. So I might, I might just type this in, actually. There we go. You can hear yeah. a nice sound. And then we're going to bring this down to about 500, the decay. Uh, Hard to get it with the mouse, exactly right. So I'm just going to, there you go. Um, sustain, put that at zero. And then the release, about 62. So bring that right down as well, about mm. 60. There we go. Then I'm going to change the drive. And this kind of adds a little bit of distortion to the sound. Yeah, because kind of I think when he was making the beat, he was basing it on that kind of bad sound systems in clubs at the time in London. Quite possibly, like yeah. his inspiration, quite so. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'd love to know. To I'd love to know what the original sound is, whether yeah, it's a preset, yeah. what it's coming from. You know, who knows? <laughs> but <laughs> so I'm ho hopefully kind of doing a decent job uh, trying to recreate it. But uh, now, importantly, the, the actual uh, envelope amount is really important. Yeah. That's so how much um, this envelope is affecting the frequency cut off. So we've got that. Uh, then we're going to look at the amplitude. I mean, there's not that much we have to do for this. Um, attack is at five milliseconds, so that's that's fine. Um, just referring to my notes here, we're going to bring the decay down or up actually, right up to about eight seconds. Sustain down again, and then the release, yeah, to about four hundred. That's fine. I'm mm. uh, going to take the um, velocity sensitivity uh, to zero. There we go, and then just turn it up a little bit here as well. So that's, that's sounding pretty good. Let's play, yep. let's play on here. Now, if we turn on the second oscillator and then take it down an octave. Yeah. There we that's go. Sounding great. That's sounding pretty good. So, um, because it's a monophonic sound, I'm going to just turn it there to the voices to mono. So, there's the basic sound. Mm -hmm. um, now, there's also some effects on it, and uh, I can hear a bit of chorus, maybe just to widen it, so I'm just going to add a bit of that. It's obviously too much, so let's just bring the dry wet level right down. And uh, also some ping pong delay. Right. Now, I'm going to make this a really tight delay. If I leave it as it is now, it's obviously kind of, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. uh, it's going to be very kind of wet and uh, not very funky. But I'm, I'm going to, let's just zoom in again so we can see this. I'm going to take the sync off uh, so we can actually just control the delay with the time here. So at the moment it's like one milliseconds. It's like, it's almost creating some kind of phasing or chorus effect. Yeah. But 
as I bring it up. And then if I take the feedback down and then the dry wet level down. It's just kind of making it a little bit wet, but still yeah. keeping keeping the tightness as well. So uh, if we just play that along, it's very loud. Let's turn it down. <laughs> so I, I might as well put it in. Yeah, Sorry, put yeah. it in. Okay, now. Also listening to the the bass line, it sounded like it was it was quite loose. There's no quantize on it, so mm. I'm gonna. Uh, play it in with no quantize and uh, just see how I get on. Not bad. I think it's maybe maybe one of the notes slightly rushed, but you know that's 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 the vibe, <laughs> isn't it? Okay, so we've got the bass line in. The next thing I want to look at. Would you use any EQ on that at all? Or? Um, good question. Maybe maybe we could kind of beef it up a little bit actually. Um, yeah. Let me let me put a bit of EQ on before the chorus and mm. uh, and the ping pong. Let's just go for an EQ eight. Here we go. Okay. So maybe around seventy hertz. Just take it off. Makes a difference. Boost it up a bit. Nice. Cool. So, should we look at the arpeggio sound? Yeah, yeah. All right, okay. So, um, one thing I haven't talked about yet is uh, the key of the track, or yes. the kind of the music theory behind it. I mean, there's not a lot of, you know, harmony going on and music going on, mm -hmm. but there is, it's definitely got a tonal center yeah. or a tonic. So, um, let's just bring up my little my notes here and uh, keyboard as well. So the note that I was playing was an A flat. So I would say that yeah, the tonic of this is is A flat, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it's got a minory sound, um, but <clears throat> there's an arpeggio sound, and I think we should talk about that first. Like I said before, it's it's. Um, Sounds like it's been sampled. Yeah. So we're going to try and recreate that. So I'll just, if I just uh, go over to the road sound here. There we go. And just, and just bring this back up again. So I have to, all these windows are open. I have to try and keep, keep them all open at the same time. So this, <coughs> what's going on is this. Mm. Which is a lovely sound and uh, this chord here is called a half diminished chord. So <clears throat> the way that's defined is uh, if we have a minor seven, so say we have this F minor seven, yeah. and then we just flatten the fifth, yeah. that's called a half diminished, sometimes called a half diminished seventh. And what we have here, because the first note is an E flat, uh, it's actually a third, inver third inversion. Right, yeah. So say we have our F minor seven here, this is the root position, First inversion, Starting second inversion, yeah. third inversion. But because we're flattening the fifth, which is the C, we get that. Mm. So Slightly unsettling. Yeah. It is unsettling, yeah. <laughs> um, so let's actually program this up. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my empty MIDI track here. Let's just turn this off. And uh, I'm going to use uh, this sound here, which is like a glockenspiel sound. On its own, it's an operator sound. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's one of the one of the factory sounds. I've right. sort of slightly messed around with the frequency cutoff, but it's essentially the same. Um, so, uh, what we're going to do first of all is to uh, use the arpeggiator, which is a MIDI effect. So I'm just going to click on that, and uh, we're going to just let's just zoom in so we can see it a bit better. There we go. I'm going to. Turn the sync off and turn it to free. And I've actually calculated these to sort of try to get exactly as I did before and try to get the exact kind of speed. Yeah. Um, but I think this, yeah, I put this as 74, uh, 72, 72 milliseconds. So let's just put that in again. There we go. And uh, so then if I play that chord, 
Look right. at this, quite mm -hmm. nice. Um, but one of the great features of this arpeggiator is the steps. So at the moment you can hear that it's, it's just cycling around those four notes, just yeah. going round and round, just in the same octave. Mm -hmm. We can actually make it so that it does consecutive octaves. Oh, great, okay. Um, so if we set that to three, for example, then it will go like up four octaves worth. Mm -hmm. So. Sounds something like some sort of, yeah. someone's waving a, a magic wand or something. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you stop it just looping over and over and over again if you want to just get it to a certain point and stop it there? <laughs> well, there's, uh, there's a really good device, another great MIDI device, which is the note length. Mm -hmm. um, so if we put that, drag that in there, uh, and then we can set the exact length. So, so at the moment it's at 100 milliseconds. Okay. Again, I worked it out, I put in 953, there we go, 953 milliseconds. There we go, so it's stopping. Mm. Now, even better than that, we can use the chord device, so we don't actually have to play down, I'll just bring the keyboard up, uh, we don't actually have to play down those notes. We can just hold down one And then you set one it to note. what chord you want it to Exactly, write. exactly. So let's do that. Uh, let's just bring that after the note length but before the arpeggiator. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is above the E flat, so it's going to be two semitones, five semitones and eight semitones. Oop. There we go. So we're just holding down one note and right. we're getting that. So then I think we should um, add some audio effects to it. And again, I'm going to go to the ping pong delay. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, probably one of the best effects, actually. Uh, and let's just zoom in. So, so one of my most used effects, anyway, in Ableton. There we go. And again, um, actually, I'm going to take the... Yeah, make it so it's free time. And then finally, let's go for some reverb and really kind of space it out. <laughs> there we go. So we've got our sound. Now, bring up the keyboard again. The actual part uh, is doing it's a kind of classic like one, four, five mm -hmm. progression. That's good, but you can see that it's uh, because it's, the, it's being played using the arpeggiator, it's, it's playing at exactly the same speed, or the speed of the arpeggiator is exactly yeah. the same. It's a sample, and obviously when you have a sample, it, the, the pitch or the speed changes as you're playing it up yes, and down the keyboard. It's been naturally played, so what, yeah. what I want to do is to actually recreate that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an audio track, and uh, actually first of all I'm just going to play that in into, into a MIDI clip. Okay. Cool, so then I'm going to, uh, on this audio track that I've just created, I'm going to set the uh, audio in, it's the Glockman Spiel, the mm -hmm. sound here, and it's post mixer, uh, and you see that's getting an input there. So yeah. I'm just going to then hit record on that clip. There we go, so I'm going to I can mute that MIDI clip now, I don't need that anymore. Mm -hmm. And there you go, you can see, There's your sample. see, see the sample. Mm. But now we need something to play it with. Yes. So again, all the tools are here in Ableton. Uh, I'm going to go to Instruments and I'm just going to pick the Simpler, which is uh, the simplest sampler there is. Oh, why is that not working? Let's just try that again. There we go, there's our simpler there. And it's amazing, I mean, the, the way that you can drag audio around in Ableton is brilliant. Yeah. Um, but we've got this audio clip here. What I need to do is just drag that into the simpler. There we go. And it now sounds like a sample. Yeah. So let's just try and get that really tight up to the start. Let's raise the level a little bit. Even at this stage we can we can mess around with the frequency cutoff. 
might think it's maybe a little bit bright, so we can bring that down a bit, but I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'm going to increase the, increase the release on the envelope so that when I take my finger off, it's still playing because we're going to be recording this in. So uh, it's going to come probably at the end of the clip and we want the sample to carry on. Yeah. But we don't want any overlapping because it's, no. going to sound, it's going to sound really messy. Yeah. So all we have to do is just change the polyphony, the voices, to one. So it's monophonic. So then we get... Okay, yeah. So we can actually make this release as long as we want, really. Yeah, because it's always going to be cut off by the next note you play. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. So let's just mute that audio clip that we recorded, and then we can actually record this in. So, uh, hey, we can actually, we could actually use the use push for this. Here we go. Okay, so... <laughs> Oh, just missed it. <laughs> so there we go. I think at this stage, it'd be rude not to actually listen to what Root sounds like over top of it. Yeah, okay, let's do a comparison. Okay, well. Not the original, but just... Oh, okay, right, just getting him in there, yeah. Chorus. So, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we could do all sorts of things now. We could, you know, try doing a remix and change around, change around the bass line and, you know, I just always want to reiterate with these deconstructions, we're not yeah. we're doing this to uh, plagiarise or copy. It's to kind of really kind of you know work out what goes behind programming these sounds. You yeah. Know, try not to rely on on presets, but actually look at the mechanics of how to program these sounds for yourself. And exactly. you know this bass sound now, I can stick it in my library, save it, and then there might be a project that comes up in six months' time where I, I think, oh, I need that kind of squelchy yeah. kind of sound. Yeah. And then I've already got that kind of bass thing to kind of base it from. So yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so should we have a look at some vocals? You did some vocals. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. tell me a bit about your what you're doing. You've, you've got your own project, right? Uh, yes, I have a project called Fire underscore Sign that right. I uh, work with some bandmates. Um, yeah, so we've we've done some samples for you. Right. We'll just we'll, yeah shove them in. Am <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And and who, so who who do you work with? Uh, with Chris Deckland. Okay. Yeah. Great. And um, how did you sort of go about the writing process of these of these vocals? We're playing. We'll play them in a minute. Right? Um, just listened to the project file that uh, you handed me with yeah. the basic stuff in and yeah. then played around with it, got inspired and just thought we'd do something a bit hooky and then um, some harmony, harmonised parts as well. Yeah. Um, and then we played around with reverb, as you're going to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I mean, I've got some here. Uh, what I did is I just, I just, I'll just load this up now, this track, but uh, I just use a drum rack and just all the vocal parts uh -huh. you gave me, I just sort of literally just dragged them all on. So <laughs> great, I mean I love I love the stuff there. And there's there's some that go together. Is it Are they the ones that go together? Yeah, I mean, do you want to have a kind of play around? If I just play the track... Um, Which one have we got it on? Just this bottom? No, here as well. So, actually, my favourite one is this. <laughs> oh, that's the chopped up one. That's a... That's a... Okay. I mean, maybe, maybe if we could find, like, one, and then we could record it record it in and then maybe I can find some chords to go with it or some kind of different yeah. bass line. Yeah, put your favourite one in then, that's fine. Okay, all right. <laughs> Just start with this one, maybe we can add another one. Okay. Okay, so let's just... I've got a road sound here.
Maybe something like that, just gonna. Maybe I could try a bass line around that. Oh, no, oh, just <laughs> stop my flow there. Let's just, uh, <laughs> there we go, let's try this. Go back onto this now. <laughs> Let's just try putting this back in now. Great, well, wow, this is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, um, he uh, uh, you know, your partner, also um, musical partner, uh, sent me some information on how he process those vocals as yes, well, yes. Um, which, yeah, we'll try and make available, actually, because but he was using Ableton, wasn't he? Yeah, and, he was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, to spit for all those kind of reverb sounds, so yeah. high quality mode, apparently. Yeah, we can pop that up into the comments if anyone wants to. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. But yeah, there we go. There's uh, <laughs> Witness One Hope. And uh, once again, I just want to say thank you to Ninja Tune for, you know, allowing us to do this one off. Uh, it's yeah. fantastic. And please do check out the Ninja Jam app. Uh, it's great, it's a lot of fun. You know, you can really kind of just, uh, you know, create your own mixes on the fly. So yeah, check it out. Okay, should we uh, have a look at some of the questions? Yeah. Or uh, actually, I don't think we're gonna, no. Okay, well, any if, 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 so if any far, questions so come up, then the comments exactly, and, exactly. Uh, and yeah, we can get that to you. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, Ski, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thank you very, thank you very much. much. <laughs> so unfortunately, we're all out of time this week, um, but hopefully that's given you lots of inspiration for your weekend of music making. Remember, you can find out more about our courses in London, Los Angeles and online by visiting our website, pointblanklondon.com. We'll be back next week with another Friday Forum Live. Thanks for watching and goodbye. <laughs>